It's no longer afternoon in Ottawa. Instead, the darkness of the night was creeping in. I was looking through the window. I saw nothing but the dark, but I could hear the rain still making a beat. The rhythms of nature seems to be more persistent than the algorithmic dynamic that pull us into contradictory effects. We all had lost people we knew by COVID-19 since the beginning of the pandemic. Some lost more than others. But there were places and times where numbers of deaths were unimaginably too high, too painful, too traumatic. It was April 2021 in Brazil, where the official count recorded 3,000 deaths per day. And it was the month of May for people in India, with over 3,000 COVID official deaths per day as well. We know that the real number can be 10 times higher. For Indonesian, including myself, nothing prepared us for the months of July 2021. The last week of July, reported over 1,500 deaths a day, including a record of 2,069 deaths on Tuesday, July 29. This tally did not include all regional deaths. In the province of Central Java alone, locally published tallies on July 23rd showed 10,000 more deaths of the total number than centralized data. We may never know how many deaths exactly happened that month. But Indonesians remember how saturated our social media timelines were with that noted notices during that dark month of July, 2021. Algorithmically aided, our feeds were turned into obituary pages. Condolence expressions such as and rest in peace were flooding our screen like a never ending stream of the waterfall. Every time we encounter a selfie of someone wearing oxygen in their nose, our heart sank. Every scroll we made, we came across COVID-19 related news and photographs. Hospitals were full of critical patients with not enough oxygen tanks. Healthcare worker wheeled the bodies of deceased COVID-19 patients. Grave diggers buried bodies of COVID-19 victims. Aerial images of expanding grade as a cemetery disseminated for COVID-19 deaths. Human bodies in these visual images give us chill, anxiety, and even fear of death. And yet, they can also powerfully scale up an individual bodily experience and personal grief into a shared experience that is potentially transformational planting seeds for collective empathy and humanity toward a network of social movements for change. Social movements are political embodiments of home human. Social movements are political embodiments of human connections. At the core of social movement is connectivity, where human body is a political object for excellence. It forms capacity, behaviors, gestures, movements, potential are primary objects of political contestation. The human body is the carrier of the beats that make up the rhythms. Extremely sick and dead bodies are of beats, radical beats. They are burning bodies, a term I use for, for bodies whose actions are radical or who are in extreme condition even when they are not burned, which are radical human routers who not only connect people, but like fire, can potentially spread the resistance to the manifold expansive networks. Amidst intense turmoil, anxiety, and despairs, various social communities have, have transformed themselves into action-oriented communities and network of volunteers. In Indonesia, India, Brazil, and as well, Various voluntary-based community COVID-19 task force network emerged everywhere. They became the main frontier in handling the COVID-19 crisis. They provided great help as the country struggled to cope with the devastating wave of COVID cases. In the height of pandemic, March to June 2021 in India, April to June in Brazil, 
July and August in Indonesia, volunteers were here, there, and everywhere. Remarkable number of volunteer groups has assembled to build in gaps and plug holes in the government's responses. They offer rooms to people who had no space to isolate, ran networks helping to locate oxygen tanks, made coffins, and even recovered the dead. Such transformation manifested prefigurated politics, a participatory politics that centered on the idea of community rooted in a network of relationships that are more direct, more intimate, more personal, and more whole than the formal, abstract, and instrumental relationships that are embedded in contemporary state and society. This prefigurated politics is anchored in three processes. First, the everyday rhythms of interactive, algorithmic interaction spanning over a year during the pandemic as people work and school from home has facilitated the growth of trust and solidarity among members of social communities. Trust and solidarity here are not instant products of algorithmic moments, but through a rhythmical process that is continuous and longitudinal, long durée. Second, such rhythmical routines also allow for mutual exploration of values, such as self-expression, self-empowerment, openness, and altruism. They may originate from pursuing personal interests in the content world, and not necessarily from a genuine desire for enacting social change. However, these shared collective values allow the community to collectively pursue a more altruistic project, a more meaningful goal towards the benefit of others and possibly the betterment of society. And lastly, the formation of an alternative sphere in participatory civic culture is practiced both algorithmically and rhythmically. This transformation happened under the pressure of crisis, under significant and even dangerous arrhythmia. It does not give us the premonition of the desired future we hope for, but at the very least, it provides us with a spark of hope that change may be possible. These networks are temporal, ephemeral, and impermanence. They might even be fragile and breakable, but they provide us, me, as a researcher and a hopeful human being, with a window of possibility for the emergence of networks and spaces of hope that may continue in the post-pandemic time to facilitate collective action and movement for societal change. 